Okay, guys. Um, as always, say something in the chat, um, please. Oh, I've got two open. So say something in the Twitch chat, just to make sure that this is working. Um, I think my microphone is on here, so we should be getting sound. Yay, okay, cool. Everybody's here. Cool. And I've got this muted, so I think everything's good to go. So let's... Uh, Let's do some demonstrations of stuff. Specifically, I've had a request to go over um, making liquids and also extruding from a curve. So you can extrude from a curve a circle, for example, or you should also be able to extrude, extrude poly, polygon faces. Sorry about the noise. You should also be able to extrude polygon faces along a curve, too. So I'm starting again with this cylinder, um, and I'm gonna do the sort of the pipe thing again really quick. So, but I'm gonna I, I'm gonna use a different approach this time. So this time I'm going to select some faces and extrude along a curve that way. So I repeat, for those of you that didn't catch it a minute ago, you can extrude a circle along a curve, or so you could use the circle and extrude along a curve, or you should be able to also extrude faces along a curve. Um, it's been a while since I've done this, so hopefully I don't stumble too hard. Uh, like I said, it's been a little while, but we're gonna pretend that this is my the stem of my pipe kind of thing. Um, the number of points, by the way, on this is, is important, so if you have a lot of points in your curve, then you're gonna get something um, which has a lot more edge loops, ultimately. So just keep be aware of that. If you add a lot of points, a lot of points along your curve, then yeah, definitely you'll have a much denser result. But, although I haven't done this in a while, so again, like I said, forgive me if I stumble a little bit here because uh, it's been a while since I extruded from polygon faces, but uh, as far as I know, it's still very much possible. The extrude function here is normally this one, but we want to extrude faces, which is a bit different than a circle. So, sorry, I'm looking in my polygon modeling stuff too, because I feel like the extrude is actually, yep, it is, control E in this case. But if we go to the option box, look, there is my curve settings. It's been a while since I've done this, but there it is. It's right there under curve settings. So then what we'll do is we'll select the faces around this curve, and we can pretend this is kind of the thickness of the bottom of the pipe kind of thing. Um, and I'll even go all the way down here. So something like that. And then we shift select the curve and click apply. Uh oh. Of course it didn't work. <laughs> object mode. No, I want object mode on this guy. Hmm. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done it this way. I usually just, uh, I usually just. Um, I usually do it with a circle. Street face select a curve. The curve is not really selected is the problem. Uh, gotta have the curve selected. So let's try this again. Right click face. There we go. Let's try it now. Apply. Ha ha! Fixed! No, I'm kidding. We want divisions in here, right? So then eight divisions, see, it's working. 10 divisions, 12 divisions, how many, do, however many you need for it to start to look good. We also have a uh, twist and taper, which is pretty nice. So, I mean, you might find that you need a lot of divisions in this case, 16 maybe, something like that. Um, but I have extruded the stem that way. Now, from here, 
we have that in the input stack. And because we still have it in the input stack, you should actually get taper and twist down here too. I don't want to play with twist in this case, but taper is kind of useful because look what we've done. We've tapered it that way. So maybe not that much taper, but you can definitely see that it's, it's useful. So control drag in the tapering, and then I can interactively make the taper happen. So something like that. Um, we do have a, a little bit of an overlapping issue with uh, this. Looks like this edge in here is overlapping. We don't want that. So then select the vertice. We could either use soft select in this case or not. But if we're going to use soft select, change the soft select settings to be instead of surface, or actually no, instead of volume, surface. We want to make sure it's surface. Excuse me. Turn down the soft select. Or, or even just turn it off in this case because I feel like, yeah, it's not worth. Fighting with the soft select that's doing the wrong thing. By the way, I'm using pick walking right now. Pick walking is when you use the arrow keys. So I'm using my arrow keys to pick walk through the vertices. So like if I had this vertice selected, I could pick walk using the arrow key to get to it. Do that one more time. Pick walk. There we go. Arrow key. Arrow key is pick walk. And now I hit the three button. And you can kind of see how, you know, how this is working for me um, in terms of making the, the pipe. But yeah, don't be afraid of using soft select. Sometimes it's, it's uh, if it's really low poly like it is right now, it might not be as useful. But... Uh, I always find trying to keep things as low poly as possible almost always works in my um, in my favor. So hit B again for soft select, B drag, and then scale, or even move up if you have to. No, I said up. Okay, I guess it's gone. Hmm. I'm getting some really weird pinching for some reason. But the general idea here is that you can use soft select to kind of uh, shape this a little bit better. It's not, like I said, I keep saying it's not always necessary to have soft select on. I, it's kind of up to you. Like it's off for me right now. R for scale. Just always hit that three button. Or because we're also doing stuff in the in the software renderer, it might even not be a bad idea at this point um, to just go ahead and poly smooth the whole thing. I mean, when you polysmooth something, you're going to get four times the density, no matter what. I'll extrude this inwards. Control F11 converts my selection from faces to, or from vertices to faces. I'll again extrude inwards. Push down the extrusion. You can add some divisions here if you want. That or really, I mean, that might just be a little bit round for you. It's not really keeping the shape. So again, add your insert edge loops. And then, depending on how tight you want that detail, as to how close you squeeze the edge loops together, and then that, that's looking better. Um, but like I said, it's okay to poly smooth also. So if you feel like, well, no. I actually want those polygons for my software renderer because we're rendering with the software renderer. Then you can also click poly smooth and turn up the divisions there. That's going to be a brute force way of doing it. But the point is, is now this will render with the software renderer just fine. Um, I feel like when I extruded this stem, like maybe I should have selected more faces instead of just the what six I think I selected. 
Um, so may, maybe it might not have been a bad idea to, um, to have more faces selected as I extruded this. But, you know, don't be afraid of using your edge loops to your advantage. I use control to deselect my edge loops. And you know, scale out with or without soft select. You might find that soft select is actually what you want. So I can make this a little bit nicer. Um, I will say, as far as smoothing is concerned or relaxing, Anything you do pretty much in 3D is almost always easier, I say almost always easier, with a low poly count. So if I would want to smooth this out a little bit, I can go to my sculpting shelf and I can click, the second brush by the way is your smooth brush, but it doesn't really matter which one you use as long as you hold down the shift button. B is your brush size, so first make sure that you have a correct brush size, um, and then hold down shift and you can see how that allows me to smooth or relax stuff out, which I repeat is going to work better with a lower poly count. So like if I wanted to smooth around this pipe, I could do that. And I could kind of relax around it. And that would round out the bottom a little bit more if I wanted to. Uh, sculpting in Maya. It's just kind of wonky and weird. I'm sorry, I still prefer Mudbox or ZBrush to doing it this way. But if you don't want to go through the trouble of learning Mudbox or ZBrush, I get that. We're, at, we're kind of out of time. So then just go ahead and use um, Maya's sculpting tools. Um, be patient. Use a tablet um, and not a trackpad like I'm doing right now because, oh, God. But it's getting closer to what I want. We even have an inflate function right here. So if we have inflate turned on, then we could even inflate. That would be another option. So like inflate and hold down shift to relax. All right, so this is, this is kind of, you know, however you want, if you want to sculpt it, great. If you don't want to sculpt it, you can always use soft select, uh, whichever. Um, again, I don't really like sculpting in Maya quite as much, but it can be done. Try to keep your poly count low, as low as you can, as long as possible. All right, so that, that, that I think uh, solves one of your one of your problems, but then we also wanted to do some liquid. I don't know if I have enough time, but I'm going to try. So let's 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 see if we can really quick. Uh, but hopefully this helped with extruding along a curve and so on. Hopefully, right. but I want to try and get some some liquid in a glass kind of thing. So let's see what I can do with that with like ten minutes, uh, like fast, right? So how fast can I generate a wine glass? Well, I could revolve around a curve, and that's kind of what I've taught you guys to do in the past, and that's fine, but boy, am I out of time. So let's see if I can find a glass under, uh, yes, right there, glasses under object mesh. So I'll just generate a glass using paint effects. Oh, see, that was even faster. Uh -huh. And then, of course, we want to convert our paint effects to polygons. And I have my one glass that just took just a second to create, right? Scale it up. It is uh, tessellated and it's also paper thin. Um, so tessellated meaning we have all triangles. If we go to mesh quadrangulate, now we're back to all quads, which we prefer. We wanna give it some thickness um, and we could even poly reduce it too. There is a poly reduction, so just next to poly smooth, we even have the opposite, which is reduce. So if you wanted to reduce it, because you're like, man, this is a lot of polygons, I don't want to deal with all this, the default percentage is 50, that's half of the um, density, but look, even at 75%, I've reduced the polygon count significantly. Just makes it easier to deal with. I'll put a Lambert on here just so I can see what I'm doing. You know, but don't be afraid of also deleting edge loops yourself. And I'm running out of time, so I've got to make this fast. But if you want to delete edge loops yourself, it's not a bad idea. Just use control backspace, right? So control backspace. So select your edge loop, control backspace. And I mean, you can do this for every other edge loop, but whatever keeps the profile on the shape that you want. 
However, this is about creating a liquid and also glasses have thickness, of course. So select the object, extrude it because we do need some thickness. Note again that I'm doing this at a fairly low polygon count. We don't really want to do this um, at a high polygon count. So I'll use local translate Z here and maybe give it two or three divisions. And then now I have a pretty f a glass that I've modeled very quickly. Super fast. Okay, so fast glass, that's done. Now let's get the liquid inside. Okay, so next what we want to do is we want to select the edge loops that will um, create this liquid for us. So if I hit F10 to go to my edge loops, I'll select every other edge loop, by the way. And the reason for this is because when I convert this, which I'm about to do, so Control F11, that selects all those faces, you know? So how much liquid is in the glass? We'll just go to every other edge loop. So just shift select every other edge loop. This is how much liquid is in the glass. Maybe we're close to the top. Control F11. That's a pretty full glass, you know? But let's say that's what we want. Then what we can now do is we can duplicate these faces under um, mesh duplicate. No, it's edit mesh duplicate, sorry. It's even got a little bit of a offset, so if you want to offset by a tiny little bit, you can, but I wouldn't really make this offset too high. Now I have two separate objects. Assuming it's green, we know it's a separate object. Uh, if for some reason that doesn't work, guys, then we have the extract function or separate function. Now I have the separate object. I want to invert the normals. This is under mesh display reverse. And then um, from here, if I hit Shift I, that's going to isolate it. This is my liquid. I want to um, close it. So under mesh, close or fill hole, bam. Now we've got the liquid inside here. Make a insert edge loop, of course, because we want to preserve this liquid all the way almost to the top. And in this case, we even have one on the bottom too. So both, this is my liquid object. And now I hit the three button and hopefully it doesn't look bad or just poly smooth it is another option. So if I hit the three button, it's not too bad. Um, if you wanted to click the extrude button once and then scale, that's another way to create yet another edge loop if you wanted to create two edge loops or more. Um, just whatever you do, make sure it looks good when you smooth it. If you want to poly smooth it, that's not a bad idea either. But now I have the wine, right? So now shift, uh, control shift, a, uh, shift I, there we go. So then now I have the glass and now I have the wine in the glass. How, how am I doing with time? Oh, six minutes, look at that. I think I could still do it, maybe. <laughs> Let's find out. Um, so uh, light, we need light, of course. So uh, under Arnold, make a sky dome. Plug in your HDR because we really want to see this in the reflections. We know that, right? So just get some kind of HDR in your sky dome. I'm feeling like all sophisticated. I can drink a glass of wine and smoke my pipe. I just need like my, uh, my smoking jacket or my robe and uh, my nice comfy chair and I'll be set. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, HDR, right? So let's just do this artist workshop. Why not? This is our HDR. This is going to give us our nice glass reflections. Next, we add your glass preset for your AI standard surface. We do actually have a glass shader that PaintFX generated. It's never going to look as good. So use your AI standard surface, call it glass, and probably it's fine to use the glass preset. Although I will mention again, you can mess with the roughness, plug some noise into the roughness, do whatever you can to make it, you know, less perfect or less CG because your basic glass preset is going to make everything look very, very CG. So by putting some noise in the roughness or just making your, your own map, um, that's going to be better. Oh man, I'm running out of time, I'm running out of time, I don't have time for this. Okay, so then five, four minutes, oh god, it's pressure, pressure. So then we make another AI standard surface. This one I'm going to switch to deep sea, deep water. Replace it. 
Um, then wherever you see a color, like scatter, right? We want this to be wine. So rather than dark blue, let's make it dark red. You know? Dark red. I mean, like red, red. Red, dark red. Really dark red, okay? And every, everywhere where we see color, we're going to make it, well, red, right? Red wine. And now we're getting something nice up here. We'll add that to the wine. Should probably name that wine. But there's my wine. Oh, time. Oh, my God. Wine. Um, and then let's just render this. Let's just see what happens. Uh-oh. Got render region on. Stop. No render region. Let's render the whole thing. And I think that's all I have time for. Um, now, basically, what we would want to do is we would want to play with our transmission um, and our color, but, because this looks a little bit too much like juice. So, boy, am I, am I out of time. So, in the interest of time, I'll use my render region, because time, time, time. And then, very quickly, very quickly, holy crap, go to my wine material, which is here, and in transmission, Play with the weight. Let's hit play again. Play with the weight because we know that a lower weight in transmission makes something less transparent. So we don't want this to look like juice. We want this to look like wine. Pull down your pull down your transmission weight. And don't be afraid to make the color right um, darker also. So you might find that you want a darker scatter color, for example and even a darker overall color. But I'm getting close to wine. I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I'd say that's getting getting there. My wine is definitely starting to come in. And this works a lot better than, say, your orange juice preset. So use the deep water preset. Um, speaking of deep water, there's depth here. You can also play with depth. That's going to be the light going into the, into the surface. Um, if you, yeah, transmission depth. So basically, play with your depth, your scatter color, your base color, and your weight. Keep in mind that less weight means l less weight means that light doesn't go through the object as much. The higher the weight, the more light passes through it. The more it looks like juice, really, or just like a Kool Aid, I guess. Less weight, less translucency, less light trans trans transmits through the object. Translucency and transmission basically mean the same thing in this case. Oh my god, that was a lot. Am I out? Am I done? Yeah, one minute. So I guess that means I'm done. But there's your wine in your wine glass and your pipe extruded along a curve. I hope that helped. Uh, do you guys have questions? Really quick. Questions, questions, questions. It helped. Thanks for doing it. Okay, cool. I guess that's it. I think I'm out of time. So I'll meet you guys back over in Discord land. But I think you'll agree that this wine looks a lot better than the previous demo. Um, because I started with the deep water preset in this case and played with my transmission settings, um, whereas the last time I played with subsurface scattering, and that's not really appropriate. Notice that my subsurface scattering is actually off in this case. If it's wax, juice, milk, skin, or anything that has that kind of translucency, then sure, play with your subsurface scattering. This is not juice, it's wine. So then our light's not scattering like it would through juice, our light's scattering like it would through our transmission. So I hope that helps. Um, I think this is really starting to look a lot like wine at this point, and I think it looks pretty damn photoreal. So I'm going to stop there and meet you guys back over on Discord. But there's your wine. <laughs>